about some operations with square roots. By operations, I mean adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Um, we've done this in our past, so let's just look at this quickly. If I have the square, 3 times the square root of x plus 5 times the square root of x, those are like terms that gives me 8 times the square root of x, right? Likewise, if I have um, 3 times the square root of 5 minus 2 times the square root of 5, oh, those are like terms. That gives me 1 times the square root of 5. Combine like terms. If I have, however, the square root of 8 minus um, 3 times the square root of 2, those are not like terms. I can't combine them unless I first simplify one of them so they are like terms. I think we can look and see, oh, I can simplify that. 4 times 2, I can bring out the 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So I just simplified the square root of 8 down to 2 times the square root of 2. Now those are like terms. Everything about the radical is the same. I have two of these minus three of these. That leaves me with negative one square root of two. Okie dokie. That's adding and subtracting. Multiplying and dividing. If I'm multiplying square roots, you can decide what you want to do first. Uh, it's kind of up to you. You can either simplify each square root individually and then multiply, or you can multiply them together. This, of course, is just the square root of 3 times 6, or 18. And then you can simplify. Oh, that has a perfect square of 9 as a factor, so that's going to simplify to 3 times the square root of 2. Okay? One quick note. If you're dealing with complex numbers or imaginary numbers, and if I had something like this, then I cannot just multiply those together. I need to simplify each one individually first. Square root of negative 3 would be i times the square root of 3. Mm. Square root of negative 6, that would be i times the square root of 6. Now if I'm multiplying, that's really just i times the square root of 3 times i times the square root of 6. Well, i times i, i squared, square root of 3 times the square root of 6, square root of 18. Mm. Square root, uh, sorry, i squared, of course, is negative 1. We already simplified this to 3 times the square root of 2. So that would leave me with a negative result. So that's one little thing that you have to always keep in mind when you're doing operations over the set of complex numbers and you have a negative under the square root. You have to acknowledge that that is an i. Because that square root, otherwise, would just that negative would just go away when you multiply them together. All righty. All right. <clears throat> of course, you might have something a little more complicated. You might have some binomial with square roots. <clears throat> uh, right. Of course. I would just do my double distribution, as I always do when I have a binomial times a binomial. That's going to give me 3. 3 times 2 is 6, square root of 3. Negative 3 root 5 times 1 is negative 3, square root of 5. Uh, negative 3 root 5 times 2. OK, so let's a negative 6. Square root of 5 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 15. Now, you might look at this and say, okay, I can do some simplifying and some combining of like terms. Uh, those radicals are not like, so you can't combine them now. Can I simplify the square root of 3? Uh, there's no perfect square that's a factor of 3. There's no perfect square that's a factor of 5 or 15, so you'd be done. You would not be able to continue. Okay? All right, so let's talk about division. Division, division. 
Division with square roots is an interesting thing. If I have something like this, well, that's just a number. There isn't a whole lot I can do. But if I'm asked to simplify, and again, to leave in simplest radical form, there is an agreement among mathematicians that it's sometimes considered bad form or bad manners, if you will, to leave a square root or a radical of any kind in the denominator. So sometimes we talk about rationalizing the denominator. And really all that means is turn an irrational denominator into a rational number. That's what that means. Rationalize the denominator. Do whatever you can, not to change the value of this fraction, but just to change the way it looks so that we don't have a radical in the denominator. So you might say to yourself, huh, what can I multiply the denominator by to turn that irrational number into a rational number? Now some of you might say, oh, well, I could square it. I could square the bottom, and you could. But if you square the bottom and then square the top, you're going to be changing the value of the number. And I don't want to change the value of a number. I just want to change the way it looks. And the way to change a fraction is to multiply it by some fancy form of 1. All right, so I'm thinking that I could multiply the square root of 5 times itself. Because the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, which is 5. 5 is a rational number. So if I'm doing that to the denominator, I have to also multiply the numerator by the same thing. Again, I'm not changing the value of my original. And I get 2 times the square root of 5. Even though that looks more complicated, I have rationalized the denominator, and in some situations, this is considered more simplified. When you get to more advanced mathematics, we're not so worried about rationalizing the denominator, but it's a useful skill to be able to do nonetheless. What if I had something more complicated in the denominator, such as 3 over 2 plus the square root of 5? Hmm. Well, if I just multiplied the bottom and the top by the square root of 5, of course, I would have to distribute. That would turn that square root of 5 into something rational, but that's just going to be putting the square root of 5 together with a 2. So that would not accomplish my mission. So I need to be clever. I need to multiply this by something that would get rid of all of the radicals. And if you play around a little bit, you'll discover that if I multiply this binomial by what we call its conjugate, that will accomplish what we want. If I have um, two numbers added together, the conjugate is those two numbers with a subtraction. Okay. These are conjugates of each other. You'll see what happens. Of course, before I forget, I have to multiply the whole fraction by a fancy form of 1. So let's see what happens in that denominator. I'm going to do my double distribution. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times negative root 5 is negative 2 root 5. Root 5 times 2 is positive 2 root 5. Ah, do you see what I see? Square root of 5 times negative square root of 5 is negative 5. Look what happens over here, my friends. Those will cancel each other out. I just want to make sure we're on the screen, which we're not. Okay, there we go. Do you see this? Those two middle terms undo each other. That's what rationalizes the denominator. Okay, so let's multiply here. I'm going to distribute that 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times the square root of 5 is negative 3 times the square root of 5. So I have a radical in the numerator. That's fine and dandy. 4 minus 5 gives me a negative 1. 
And if I wanted to, then I could just divide each term by negative 1 to make this even nicer. Woo, that was a very nice result. So in rationalizing the denominator here, I ended up with something much nicer, much easier to work with. And that's the whole idea about this. Okay, let's do another example of rationalizing the denominator using conjugates. That's a term you should really know. Conjugate. Simplify. That bell is very insistent. Okay, let's say I had 4 plus uh, 2 times the square root of 3 over negative 1 uh, minus 5 times the square root of 3. What the heck? <coughs> okay, please resist the temptation just to divide out those square root of 3's. I'll have to run screaming from the room if you do that. Why can't you just divide? Yeah, of course, PEMDAS. This whole thing is grouped together. You have to do that addition first. You have to do the subtraction first before you divide. You, when you have things added, you can't undo addition with division, okay? So don't even think about it. All right, here we go. I want to simplify this by rationalizing the denominator. I have a denominator with an irrational number. We've just discovered if I multiply by the conjugate of this, that will, in fact, get rid of that square root. The conjugate is just changing that middle sign. That's it. So negative 1 plus 5 times the square root of 3, that's the conjugate of this denominator. I need to multiply the numerator by the exact same thing, so I'm not changing the value of this. All right, double distribution, here we come. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 times 5 root 3, negative 5 root 3. Negative 5 root 3 times a negative 1 is positive 5 square root of 3. Negative 5 root 3 times 5 root 3. Well, negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. Root 3 times root 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Numerator, again, double distribution. 4 times negative 1, negative 4. 4 times 5 root 3. 20 times the square root of 3. 2 root 3 times negative 1. Negative 2 times the square root of 3. 2 root 3 times 5 root 3. That's going to be 2 times 5, which is 10. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is 3. Now we can do some simplifying. That's my favorite part. 25 times 3, that is negative 75. 1 minus 75. I believe is negative 74. All right, I have negative 4 plus 30. So that's going to be a 26. No, negative 4, yeah, plus 30. Uh, 20 root 3 minus 2 root 3, those are like terms because they both have a square root of 3. And that gives me 18 times the square root of 3. Okay, I certainly hope I did my math correctly there, my arithmetic. So now the question is, am I done? Is this in simplest form? Well, let's move the camera so we can actually see what the heck we're doing here. I think we certainly have rationalized the denominator for sure, because there's no square root in the denominator, but I don't think this is in simplest form because I have two terms in the numerator, I have one term in the denominator. I'm thinking there is something that I can factor out of the numerator that I could then divide. These are all even numbers. 26 is an even number. This 18 is an even number. The 74 is an even number. So I'm pretty sure I could factor out a common factor of 2 from the numerator, leaving me with 13 plus 9 times the square root of 3, all over negative 74. 
And then I can divide out that 2 and that negative 74, can I? How many times does 2 go in to 74? 2 goes into itself once. 2 goes into 7 three times with 1 left over. So 37. So my final answer, which I think I will awkwardly write up here, will be 13 plus 9 times the square root of 3 all over negative 37. And the question is that negative, I could leave the negative there, or I could put the negative in front of the whole shebang. I could distribute the negative onto both terms in the numerator. Okay? And there you have it. Now, you might not think this looks all that much nicer than what we started with, but I did rationalize the denominator and I did simplify. If you want to just prove to yourself that what we began with is equivalent to this, you can throw them in your calculator. Just be careful. I would advise you use the fraction key to make sure you're doing the order of operations correctly. Put this into your calculator. See what weird decimal you get? Put this in, you should get exactly the same decimal approximation. Alrighty, have fun.